The effects of four types of graphite coder on lightbox readings are to be studied. Since readings will differ from day to day, observations are taken on each of the four types every day. The results are as follows. So we have the graphite coder type and the days, right? So it looks like a randomized block design layout, if you look at it carefully. And we have a non-parametric procedure to handle data like this if we don't want to use the ANOVA randomized block design procedure. And so when you look here, it says use the Friedman FR test, and that's the equivalent procedure that basically is our non-parametric version of randomized block design. It says use it at the 5% level of significance to test the claim. So again, test the claim indicates it's a hypothesis test, that all the graphite coders produce the same average light box readings. Now, of course, the problem originally would have said average because of the randomized block design nature of it, but the Freeman FR test, of course, talks about the, um, the median, not the average. So we'll use median as a measure, measure of our center in this case, not the average. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start by writing out that claim in symbols, right? So the claim is going to be very similar to the last problems that we dealt with, the Kruskal Wallace type claim. We're just simply going to say that the median, so because since it said there that all of them produce the same value, we're going to say the claim is that the median for the graphite coder M is equal to the median for the graphite coder A is equal to the median for graphite coder K is equal to the median for graphite coder L. Okay, so all the medians are the same. My last median didn't print that well there, did it? But either way, those are all our medians. Now, they're asking about graphite coder types. We could run a test to see if the blocks, in other words, the days are different, but obviously they don't care because they say here that they know that the readings will differ from day to day. So they're not interested in that. They're aware that that's the case, so they use those as the blocks just to block out those differences. Okay, so now let's look at HO and HA. Now, for HO, of course, it'll be the same as the claim because, you know, the claim has equality in it, and that's what the HO always expresses, right? Much better medians there. And then HA is that at least one differs from the rest significantly, right? So at least one differs from the rest, from the rest significantly. Okay, so, you know, dot, dot, dot. All right, now, from there, what we're going to say is to uh, begin to manipulate the data, the data step, right? We also want to, if we can, write down the significance level here. So let's go ahead and say that alpha is equal to, if we look back at the problem here, we see that alpha was 5%, right? Our alpha was 5%. Okay, so our alpha here is going to be 5%. That's 0 0.05. And from here, let's go ahead and take the data and begin to rank it. So what we want to do here is just rank the data among the blocks. So that's all we want to do. We just want to rank the data within each block. Okay, and then at the end, then get the rank totals. for each treatment. Okay, so basically the idea here is that we're going to simply rank across the block. So we'll only have to give ranks for four numbers at a time, four numbers at a time, four numbers at a time. So we'll be ranking them one to four across the blocks. We won't rank the entire set of data as if it was all independent data. Since it's in blocks, we'll just rank in the blocks themselves. And then when we're done, we'll total up the columns. And the idea behind the procedure is simply that, you know, of course, if, if M, graphic coder M, always had the smallest yield or output here, if it always had the smallest reading, then it would always get the rank one, let's say, in theory. And then when you totaled up its ranks, it would be very low compared to the other values that didn't always get one. And so that's the kind of way that we'll distinguish between the different graphite coder types in this problem. All right, so let's go get our data and do that in our next step. Okay, so I've uh, just copied the data over in this little grid here just to make it easier for me to be able to write my ranks in the space provided. Um, but you could, of course, done it right on the paper there itself. It makes no difference. All right, so what we want to do is rank right across the rows, right? Because the blocks are these days, one, two, and three. So we're going to rank them right across. And of course, we start out with the smallest value being rank one, right? 
the next smallest value being rank two and then three and then four. So it's nice and easy to rank with such a small number of values, right? Then this will be rank one, two, three, four, right? And then we'll go down to here and we have um, rank one, uh, rank two, rank three, rank four. And now we're done. From there we want to get the totals now. So the rank total for M, so the first guy's total will be 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. 3 and 6 and 2 more is 8. 4, 4 and 4 makes 12. And 2 and 3 and 3 makes 6. So those are our rank totals. So this is the rank total for graphite coder M, rank total for graphite coder A, rank total for K, and rank total for L. All right, that's it. All right, so now from here, what we want to do is take those values and plug them into our test statistic formula. So our test stat formula is actually quite involved. Um, the formula itself is denoted by FR, FR for Friedman, of course, right? And the formula is like this. It's 12 over, it'll be B times K times K plus 1. B is the number of blocks we had in the problem, K is the number of treatments, and of course K plus 1 is just one more than the number of treatments. Then we're going to multiply that by the summation, the summation of the rank totals squared. So this is from, you know, J equals to 1 up to K, the number of treatments we have, right? Then when we're finished with that, we'll do minus 3 times the number of blocks times the number of treatments plus 1. So it looks a lot like the formula we had for the Kruskal Wallace H test. It's very similar. It's also similar in the sense that it has um, its distribution is a chi-squared distribution, so we'll be using a chi-squared critical value to compare it against. All right, so now that we have the formula, let's go ahead and take the numbers that we found here and plug them in so we can end up with our test statistic, right? Okay, so our test stat, our test stat will eventually become the following. It's going to be FR is equal to 12 over, now the blocks is 3, we have 3 blocks, right? The number of treatments is 4, and the number of treatments plus 1 would be 5 then. So 3, 4, 5 here, times, use a parenthesis for the rest, we're going to have this value squared, so the rank total squared, plus 8 squared, plus 12 squared, plus 6 squared. Those are all the rank totals quantity squared. Then minus 3 times the blocks, the number of blocks, 1, 2, 3, times k plus 1. k is 4, plus 1 would be 5, of course. All right, and now let's take those numbers and enter them into our calculator to see what we get. So we're going to have 12 divided by, use parentheses for the bottom, 3 times 4 times 5. Of course, you can just do this arithmetic in your head, you know, 3 times 4 is 12, times 5 is 60, but um, in case there are numbers that you're not comfortable doing in your head, you put them in the calculator like that. Make sure the bottom is in parentheses, or else you will end up messing up the calculation, right? Okay, then times, it'll be 4 squared plus 8 squared plus 12 squared plus 6 squared. Close the parenthesis up, and then do minus 3 times 3 times 5. Okay, and when you're done, you get the answer 7. Okay, so our test stat works out to be exactly 7. All right, now from there, what we want to do is compare that to our critical value. So let's get another sheet of paper out to do that next. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our rejection region. Remember, it's going to be a chi-squared distribution that we're going to be working with. We'll draw it as a, you know, a right skewed sort of bellish looking shaped object, right? And we shade the tail there, that's our rejection region. And we're going to be looking for the chi-squared value that starts the rejection region down here on the number line below. So it's going to be chi-squared alpha comma k minus 1. So the same type of critical value we had for the kruskal wallace H test. Now in our particular problem, the alpha is 5%. The number of treatments we had were 4, so take away 1, and we will have 3 as our degrees of freedom. Okay, so now let's go to our table, our chi-squared table, and look up 0.05 with 3 degrees of freedom. 
Okay, so we're on the chi-squared table looking up 0.05, going down to three degrees of freedom. We get the answer 7.81473. Okay, so our value turned out to be 7.815, 7.815. That's your critical value. Remember your test stat was seven, so your Friedman FR test stat was seven, and that test stat lands just before the rejection region. So we're going to say, do not reject HO, and therefore do not support HA, do not support H A. And that means that essentially since our claim is HO, we're going to say the sample data does not allow us to reject the claim, right? The sample data, the sample data does not allow us to reject the claim. The claim here is that all the treatment means or medians are the same.